Three, two, one. What's up? What's up? All right, everybody. This is Joseph F. Price. We're back in the house. Good afternoon. Hope everyone's doing fine. I got with me a special guest, uh, Mr. Andrew Murray, who's actually uh, a coach out there in the world. Uh, he's one of the recovery coaches up and coming, and he's actually a, a decent friend of mine. Uh, we collaborate and work on a couple things together. We have a partner uh, client or two, so we worked on with somebody before. So he's a person that I'm very familiar with. Um, part of my um, spotlight on the recovered series of which I just want to have a conversation with real live people that have been through what it is that you're going through right now and have come out on the other side. And, you know, before we even get started in this conversation, there's a theme as to what happens when people come out on the other side. It's basically, um, they figure it out. So what is figuring it out? What figuring it out is getting the recovery capital as in learning the proper techniques to, uh, free yourself of what you are chained by executing those techniques on a consistent basis and waiting for the results to manifest themselves and also a, a continuous journey of managing oneself on a daily basis. I'll say it over and over again, and I'll say it every time we meet. Recovery is not an event. It's a journey. And what we're talking about today is a person's journey and the journey has like a whole bunch of steps. So we're going to talk about some of those steps. Say hi to everybody, Mr. Andrew Murray. What's up, everyone? Love the introduction. Yeah, how about that? Great introduction. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I really don't know exactly where to start, but uh, I, I guess I would start like this. Uh, you know, one of the neat things about just life in general, but also different associations is it combines various generations. So my generation being somebody that grew up in the sixties and your generation being somebody that grew up in the early two thousands, uh, two different generations. And in the context of pornography addiction, they're actually two different addictions, but they're similar. And so it's always neat to get a, 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 a different perspective and especially a young person's perspective because it really is. It's a little bit different in the younger people than the older people because, uh, you know, we, we started out with magazines and you all started out in high gear with the movies. So if you would uh, just tell us a little bit about where you grew up and uh, before you started looking at porn. Uh, yeah, so I grew up in Illinois, uh, outside of St. Louis, um, literally over the river. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just, just like any other kid, you know, going to school. Um, I'm a dancer. I love to dance and hang out with friends. I love to skateboard and stay active. Um, yeah. That's pretty much, you know, my childhood, hanging with friends, skateboarding, getting into trouble, any what any teenager would do. <laughs> now, you know, did, did, did you old. have, um, did you have like, um, were you from a divorced family or was your family um, uh, a, a, a family that stood together? Yeah, so my uh, parents were divorced at, when I was six years old. Um, it didn't like... I, I didn't have a problem with it back then, you know? Oh, I don't have a problem with it now. Um, but I, I didn't have a problem with it. Like, they weren't arguing. So I would go to my dad's um, after school on Thursdays through half a Sunday. And then my mom would pick me up in the afternoon on Sunday and then I'd go to school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. Um, so I didn't really have a problem with that at, 
at all, um, which is good because a lot of parents fight. So, you know, I'm very fortunate that my parents, um, you know, didn't put me in the middle in between all of it. So, yeah. So when did your parents break up? How old were you? Uh, then? Okay. So, um, Approximately, think, you don't have to hit it on the nose. We're not gonna. It's you know. yeah. It was around the same time. It was like six years old. It was like oh four, oh about two thousand three, two thousand four, uh, when they broke up. Um, yeah, my uh, that's kind of like how it was growing up. Is going to my mom's. She she's a property manager, so I'd always like help her with houses. Uh, my dad, he. Uh, it was a contract worker um, at the, uh, on the uh, on the base. So um, I actually got like two, like I, I got to live, um, you know, my dad, when I'd go over to my dad's house, I'd always have like the nice stuff, right? So you have your parents that, uh, you know, he would, he would spoil me, but I was always grateful. So you know, I'd always have the nice stuff. And over at my mom's house, she was very like frugal with money. Like she wasn't broke, but she knew how to manage her money. And so, um, you know, so take it from, uh, you know, your mom lives in like old Victorian houses with a bunch of dogs and you get all dirty, right? So I'm a kid, I'm getting all dirty. And you go over to your, to your dad's house and it's a nice immaculate place. <laughs> so I got like, to a best world. My, my, my mom would always, um, you know, I was never like a, like a, um, like a greedy, like I was never greedy or like, you know, I want this, I want that. It was very, you know, I, I kind of, I saw both sides, right. My dad would give me something and then I, I was very grateful. I was very grateful as a kid. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like how it was growing, growing up. So let me ask you this, and I, I kind of think I have the answer, but help me out with the specific answer from you. It sounds like you had loose boundaries over when you were with mom and tight boundaries with dad. Is that true? Um, tight as in, I would, I would say the opposite. It was mom was probably, strict with the boundaries and dad was loose with the boundaries. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So I think it it flopped. Yeah. They were both at extremes, though. Is that true? Yeah. Both, but yeah. but but I guessed that the opposite wrong. Okay. All yeah. right. Because see, one of the things you may uh, just I'm just going to remind you of is that usually people that fall to porn addiction, they have um, boundaries that are either extremely tight or mm -hmm. extreme or extremely loose. So you had kind of the best of both worlds supporting you. It's just a fact yeah. that tends to show up. So about what age were you when you first got into pornography? And tell me about the age and then also your first experience. And then what happened after the first experience? So I had like a, it was like, a, like an iPod, mm -hmm. like the first generation, mm -hmm. um, it was an iPhone. It was just an iPod. Uh, it, I think it was fourth generation. It was like a fourth generation iPhone, iPod. And uh, I got it for like Christmas or something. And um, yeah, I think I was that kind of got my attention with like the Internet. And I had like the Internet in my hands at mm -hmm. 13, 14 years old. Um. Yeah. And I think that's just kind of brought, you know, strung up some curiosity as a, as a, as a young child. And then what happened? I, I mean, you saw it and then what happened? It was like, so, oh, I like this. And then you, you kept stumbling into it or you kept deliberately stumbling into it or what happened? Hmm. You're, you're asking me these questions because I never really asked myself. You know, I don't ask myself every day. It's kind of unlocking in my brain. Um, so I didn't know what like what what porn was, mm -hmm. and so I was uh, I would go on YouTube, and 
I would look up, I would look at girls like dancing. It started with dancing. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm looking at these grown women like dancing and like that struck my curiosity, right? Oh, what? Wow. This girl, this woman's really attractive. So like, I didn't know what before, you know, porn, I didn't know what that was. So I would, you know, look on YouTube and just like watch these videos um, for, you know, quite a while. Um, and then, you know, and then I was like introduced to, you know, uh, PG-13 movies, rated R movies, like the American Pie movies. Mm -hmm. um, and so like that really like, whoa, what's this, you know? And it was, I was very curious <clears throat> at the time. And then I remember going, I was like 13, 14. I went over to my friend's house and we both had an iPod. Right. So we were very curious. This was like later on, um, maybe like maybe a year after. Uh, but like we were really curious and we would look up porn like nothing like on our on our iPods. We have Internet. We got Wi-Fi connection. So we're like looking these up. And I mean, I was like, oh, wow, like what the heck? This is crazy. It's like oh, the palm of my hands. Um, and yeah, like I remember another time um, I went over to the same friends. We went over to his grandparents' house and they had like an old, uh, <laughs> like an old VH, or no, I, I don't know if it was V, I think it was a CD. I don't think it was VHS, but it was a CD. And what, this is like 20, 2010, 2011, and the CD is probably like 05. And like, we're watching it. Like me and him are watching pornography. And so it struck my curiosity, like again. Um, and then like time after time, I'm like on, you know, my iPod, I'm watching porn. <clears throat> um, thinking nothing of it, like this isn't gonna affect me, right? And my friends are doing it, it's fine, it's cool, whatever. Um, and then, uh, then like it went over to like, when I got a phone, like I got a phone at 15, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I had a phone before, but it wasn't turned on, like the internet wasn't on. So right. my parents would, here, here's a phone, but don't lose it. You know, I'm not going to turn on the phone so you, you know, can, uh, so, you know, so you won't lose it. So uh, I got a phone like 15, 15 years old. And uh, yeah, like I'm watching porn on the internet, like through my phone. And then I remember, I think my dad just sensed it <laughs> that I was watching porn and he like, took my phone and I think he went through the search history and it was like the most embarrassing thing ever like having your dad catch you watch porn so then um, what happened with that with, with that what, what did um that oh man then he put like blockers on the phone I remember yeah he put blockers so I couldn't I couldn't get to it but now that you're, you're asking these questions to unlock my brain so to actually step back maybe maybe a year before that the same friend um we're like we're watching tv my parents are gone they're you know hanging with their friends and we're you know alone in the house and we're watching like we're on demand and then we find like hd like pornography videos and so like we're watching it and we're like we're just like so like mind blown what we're what we're what we're seeing here and uh then like later that it was like a saturday i'm sure it was like a saturday night and that sunday evening we had to drive my friend back home and we're in the car <laughs> and that it, it's funny because the day the, the way that my dad like 
catches us like he's just super calm like he's not yelling but like you know you're like oh yeah he, he knows <laughs> and you just feel awkward so we're sitting you know in the car thinking nothing of it like oh we just saw something on tv um he won't know um and so we're driving and it's just silence and then he just says uh so I, I actually I don't remember I'm, I'm butchering it right now but I don't remember what he said exactly but it was like along the lines of like uh he was like hinting that he knew but he didn't want to like embarrass us for mm -hmm. 14 15 years old and um he's like yeah um yada 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 like yeah you're watching tv last night cool on the uh on my tv yeah yeah <laughs> and so like he's just kind of like he makes it as a joke but like hey i see you like quit it knock it off um and you know he goes hey um please don't watch porn on my tv <laughs> and he goes it's my tv okay <laughs> and so like it was just very embarrassing for us and he leaves and i tell you like the ride home it was just it was just like oh oh my goodness it's just so embarrassing but yeah but from what i was saying um before like a year after that you know he sees that there's porn on my phone he puts blockers and i mean this is just like a continuous cycle um you know over the years <clears throat> and then like it didn't stop until like when i started to notice it like 2018 like that, 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 this was like a problem, you know. Like I was, I was curious because I'm, I'm going to my friends. I'm like, I mean, I don't know. Like my, my friends, are they doing it? like? It doesn't seem to, you know, affect them. Um, but I like after just years of like, you know, watching porn and not really thinking of uh, like anything of it. I'm like, man, what am I like? Why am I wasting my energy? Like, well, I'm hiding it in secrecy for all these years. Like, it doesn't make you feel good. Like, it's, it's, like, it's, it's, it's work. That's, that's work for a porn addict to hide, um, you know, videos from friends, from family. Like, you're going to slip up. It's going to happen. You know, you're a porn addict, it's gonna happen because you're just so like struck up, like you're, you know, the the adrenaline of watching porn, you're not thinking of anything of it. You might forget to delete a video and then, you know, it can just go downhill from there. So I'm like, man, why am I like wasting my energy? Like watching porn, like I dance, I skateboard, I do this stuff, like it drains my energy. This is not like what I wanna do. And, um actually i think my mom because she introduced me to um sacred sexuality tantra and like it opened up my eyes and i was like oh whoa like this is really cool not to like get into detail about it but it's just like a new um like a new paradigm a new way of thinking about sex and really cool thing really cool stuff so i like knock that off i quit that i mean it, it wasn't easy but i was really like interested in um tantra i'm like wow it's like this is so cool and how like how you can like move energy right it's like your chi like your 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 um your ingredients your sperm is chi right when you let it it's out body like, feng shui is what you're talking about I mean, yeah, that, yeah. That's so a it's like, that's a way I can describe it. I understand mm -hmm. what you're talking about. But you it know, was like really interesting to me. I'm gonna interrupt you on 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 one thing that that uh, I do want to point out. Um, mm -hmm. And and like that guy in my life, his name was Chuck. See, it, it was like uh, forty something years ago. So I guess I can say Chuck. But in your case, it wasn't that many years ago, so you might not want to say the guy's name. But what I want to talk about is that guy whose house that you got your first exposure to porn. 
it's generational. I just want to point out that uh, there was somebody that was older in that friend's house that was doing porn, and that's how you got to porn. And I always tell people it's generational, that whenever we can help somebody, we're helping mm -hmm. somebody that's coming up after them. Because in your friend... You, 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 I don't know if you, if you even noticed it, but as you did, I'm looking for that as you're telling me anyway, because it's the same pattern every single time anyway. So it's not anything yeah. like new. So your friend had an adult and I think it was the dad, but it doesn't matter specifically who it was. It was somebody older. And the point yeah. is, is when you can stop it, you're stopping the people mm -hmm. below. And I, right. I, 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 I'd be remiss if we didn't point how right. important that is and that this is something that it's picked up at home and a lot of mm -hmm. times people you know uh think oh it's not a problem at my house that's what you think yeah you, you think it's not a problem at your house but you know we can knock yeah. on, we can knock on eight doors and it's going to be a problem at one of those doors for yeah real for real if not two right. of those doors so all right, so you did this and you did that and you did this and and what was the thing that 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 okay you, you said that you, you you didn't appreciate all that time wasting but like what was the thing that said no more what was it more than just time was what was the thing that really hit you and just said I can't have this 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 doesn't match my identity it doesn't match my blueprint because, see, we quit differently. A lot of times people get forced to quit. But yeah. you and I, our story is such that we actually just embrace this doesn't work. Yeah, I got, like, introduced, I got, like, introduced to, like, coaching and, like, um, consulting. And I was, like, really, like, into that. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I'm like, well, I can't, like before even with the whole porn recovery coach like i didn't even think of it like that i can coach someone but it was interesting to me and then like i got introduced to like tantra and like around the same time like coaching and I, i'm like oh man like i need to i need to cut this out um so i think like looking up videos of um uh ista which is um the retreat that i've been on uh i was very curious i'm like oh this is like really cool like this is something i want to do I'm like what do they know what do the co what do the teachers know um the facilitators like this is very interesting and it's like i've been doing it you know i've been looking at sex all wrong this whole time like you know seven eight years up until that point uh so yeah i would have to say I, I mean thanks to to tantra like tantric teachings like that's so cool um so tell yeah. me about your recovery journey and, and and you know i mean um i mean like mine was like um this doesn't work in my life I'm going to mm -hmm. be a porn recovery coach. And it just basically took like six weeks of something that just fell out of my life for good. That's mm -hmm. my little journey. Um, and, and I think the reason being is because I didn't watch that many movies. And that's, yeah. again, that's where we're talking generational because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I was more, there was exposed to more stills than, movies and movies have more stuff going on therefore that uh creates a, a stronger addiction so tell me about your quitting your struggles you know your challenges how did that go um yeah i mean it was hard what was, was like, hard what was hard like from stopping something that you've been doing for so long and like, you know, teaching yourself like, no, like a different way. 
right? So it was like hard for me, of course, to totally cut that, cut that like out. You know, I would go a week, two weeks, and then I'd like fall back into uh, like watching porn. Um, so it was like, it, it was, it was hard for me. <clears throat> um, but like over time when I was like thinking, I'm like, okay, well, why don't I like, I'm still getting, um, you know, if I cut porn and this is like in the, you know, with, with Tantra, uh, if I like cut porn and I could, what, like, uh, you get bored in what, five minutes, three, four minutes. Some people right? do. You, I, I, I don't right? get bored, but people get bored. Yeah. Well, I mean, as like when you're watching, you know, say like you're, you're, you're masturbating, you're like, oh, you need something in front of you or you're going to get bored. Like just doing it. Just No, I get what you're saying. Bored. People get so, bored. Yeah. So it's like, okay. So I was like, it was almost like a game. Like, okay, let me, let me, uh, like, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to ejaculate, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to, I'm not going to use porn. I'm not going to use images. I'm going to try to use my mind. I'm going to use like images in my head. Right. And then as soon as the, like, as I hit like, the 90 to 100 percent tile right mm -hmm. i'm gonna try to stop so it like became like a game like okay i'm gonna whenever i do feel like watching porn i'm just gonna be like no no no, no. let me just wait let me just try this way well let me ask you something i mean that's how you started off but then eventually because th these are things that people do and 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 you can succeed in maybe not doing porn for a while doing these things. But here, here's, here's the problem. If you don't get recovery capital, if you don't learn a why, if you don't learn how to manage yourself, if you don't get committed to being a better version of yourself, if you don't do some of that, that real recovery work, just, just exacting a bunch of discipline, eventually that collapses. And what you're talking about is, is exacting a bunch of discipline. So how did you yeah. how did you add some real recovery capital in with that discipline? Where did you get that the tools for recovery capital from? YouTube. Okay. All right. So like, like So in other that. in other words, you weren't playing that little game. Oh, let me just not do this. Oh, let me just not do that. I'll take a call. See because that's not going to work. No, no, no. No, because uh, your addiction is 250 addictions and you got to figure out you got to take them take them out one at a time. And then yeah. when you take out 250 micro addictions, you don't have an addiction. And the reason yeah. why people keep going around in circles is 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 they haven't stuck in a, they haven't stuck around cuz they know everything to understand mm -hmm. that their addiction is 250 micro addictions that they need to address and be about the business of addressing those and yeah then they won't have the major addiction because actually what you had described was mm -hmm. you were talking about micro addictions fantasy and masturbation underneath the porn those are actually my in this context there are other addictions because as soon what i find when 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 i get people off of porn is then Oh, they find out they have a masturbation addiction. Then when they don't have a masturbation addiction, they find out they got a fantasy addiction. Mm. And then mm. when they get rid of that, then they start working on their relationship. And then when they start working on their healing, and then after they work on that, then they start becoming that phenomenal version of themselves. And then all of a sudden, boom, it starts yeah. to flip. See, but they started where they thought, that this journey is about not doing anything. No, this journey is not about not doing. It's about continuously doing. So, yeah. um, did you relapse a bunch? And how, how long did it take for you to like, 
from day one to mastery, how, how, how many months did that take? Now I'm, I told you it took me six weeks. Yeah, it took me longer. <laughs> it took me longer. It cool. wasn't like an overnight thing. Um, well, six weeks isn't overnight either. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. It's fast in, in our context, but still it's not. Yeah. Overnight. Um, and I think what also helped was telling a friend that I had this problem. So it was like, it made it easier. Like yeah. I wasn't hiding it. And then like, there was no judgment. It wasn't like, Oh, what? Like, it's like, he was probably having the same problem I was having. That's when the ball opened. Yeah. When you're when like, you told open him, about it. when you told him, that's when the whole thing popped. Cause mm -hmm. it was a lot of guilt. Mm -hmm. on myself that's, you know that's when the whole thing popped yeah. and you know, and you want to know something that that's like weird it's really weird like um i told you that you got to get off on your education and so mm -hmm. i got this book called dopamine nation oh and, yeah yeah okay. so um it, it wasn't even in this book by the way but mm -hmm. they talk about how you know we're addicted Dopamine is going to be at the source of everybody's addiction. So they talk about different ways that people create dopamine and this and that and the other. Now, check this out. Many porn addicts have become dopamine fiends, per se. You know, when you do what you just finished doing, as in you just finished sharing your story and you were very vulnerable and this and that and the other, you've just flushed yourself with a lot of dopamine. It actually blasts you with dopamine. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. Hmm? So it's actually healthy. It actually gives the addicted some of what they want. The very yeah. thing that they're avoiding, telling somebody, gives them that jolt. Because remember, break a habit, make a habit. Mm -hmm. You don't get rid of habits, you replace them. You know? the whole journey of well you tell me i mean one thing that people that are addicts they they get trapped in the age that their addiction st started at and as soon as they get out of their addiction they um they start to grow up again mm -hmm. and then they also see all the things that they were missing like hobbies and such and this and that and the other and that's one yeah. of the things that uh i always tell people um when you stop the addiction, then all of a sudden you start to see stuff that you didn't see before. So talk about stuff that you saw and at what point did you start to see stuff that you didn't see before? Cause that happened. Well, I mean, the way that you look at women. Oh, it's a big one. Yeah. They're not just <laughs> objects anymore, huh? <laughs> They're not just pieces of meat anymore, huh? Right, They're right. not just there for your good and pleasure anymore, huh? <laughs> they're, they're not just pieces of machinery anymore, huh? All right. They're not exactly. just bitches anymore, huh? They're, <laughs> they're, they're women now, huh? Okay. All right. Yeah, it was like the way like my mind was like, um, you know, like listening to like, like rap. Like I listened to a lot of hip hop too. That was like another thing. And that kind of like, you know, that's it. Uh, they talk about women like that. Well, there's actually um, some what I would consider musical porn. I think you know more about that than I do. Uh, uh, music that's just porn. And I'm mm -hmm. just going to keep it real. Uh, I drove Uber one time and, uh, you know, people are weird. They do weird stuff. And so this woman that I was riding with, she didn't really have anything better to do. So she, you know, took the Bluetooth over, which was fine with me. And all she kept doing was playing like, musical porn it was like a 90 minute ride and all she kept doing was yeah like they, they were saying all kinds of graphical stuff about how i want to do this and how you would be and you know your you know your physical environment yeah it was it was really much and i'm like yeah you think you're funny don't you i know what you're doing you're trying to be funny but you know what i'm a professional in anything that i do so you know you just keep on have your fun but yeah, there's some, <laughs> it, there's some music that's definitely uh, can arouse people. And that particular day, that that lady was having her little fun with me.
playing that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you did bring up something that's important, and I think that you brought something that's important to the recovery process. Is yeah, you got to watch what you're exposed to, and yeah. music is one of those things. And I, I, I kind of let you go and just you know talk without interrupting because like I always invite people to listen and go back and listen to people's stories because mm -hmm. basically you, you, you told people a lot of what they need to do versus anything that anybody could ever tell. Mm -hmm. Basically, if they listen to how your journey evolved, their journey is going to be similar. And if they don't do some of the same things that you do, they're never going to get to recovery. Yeah. Right. And it's about right. something that you do. You weren't waiting around for it to happen, you know, because if we're waiting around, I, I heard some something on, I have so much stuff coming at me, good stuff. And uh, it was on some of it somewhere. It's like, if you're waiting around for somebody to come and save you, you're crazy. They're not coming. They're not coming. Nobody's coming to save you. They're not coming. You got to go out and find the resources to save yourself. And even though we're producing some of those resources, it's incumbent upon people to go out and find those resources. You got to find them. Nobody's mm -hmm. coming to save you. So we're almost done here and uh, we're going to have another time where we can go back into your story at a later date. But I always ask people, because everybody has something really, really, really super special to offer everything. So that being said, what is one thing that you want everybody to know in the context of recovery addiction? What, what one thing, if, if, if they didn't hear anything else and they just started right now, what one thing would you want anybody to know about porn addiction recovery? Um, <clears throat> I would have to say to get out of your head, right? Like when you're in your head and you're like, I can do it. I can overcome porn by myself. And you know, you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to go a week. I can do it. Right. And then like you, you, you end up falling back to where to to the beginning right so i would say to get out of your head and to actually talk to yourself um let out like emotions right like how you're feeling because we're walking you're going you know you're moving every day you're doing something you're going to work you're getting coffee you're doing all this stuff and you're in your head you're not thinking you're just like moving you're like without even your body is just doing it right? It's like a habit. So just as porn, just like porn, you go and get on your laptop, you watch porn because you've been doing it for, you know, five, six years. You're in your head. But if you step out and like you talk to yourself, like, oh, wait, 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 you, you know, you're on your computer right now. And you're like, hold on, hold on. Okay. Why am I looking at porn? Why am I feeling this way? Why are the, all these emotions, you know, or why are they coming to me? Right. So I think it's important to like, to write things down, get out of your head, talk to yourself. Um, like just, it's okay to get mad. It's okay to get angry. Just let out these like trapped emotions in your body. <clears throat> it's like I said, you're just in your head way too much. You're on the computer, you're typing, you know, you're asking for help. It's better to, to um, get on the phone and talk to someone. Hey, I'm feeling, th this is exactly what I'm feeling. I'm feeling vulnerable. Um, I've been watching porn for so long. Instead of being on the computer and you're in your head, right? Not really talking, not using any verbal communication skills with people. So that, back to what I'm saying is to get out of your head, talk to someone, talk to yourself. <clears throat> Um, it's okay to talk to yourself. You're not crazy. So number one is to get out of your head. That's, that's, that's my advice. Cool. 
And um, I appreciate you stopping by. And let me acknowledge you because it's not easy to talk about those kind of things. So I do want to acknowledge you for uh, being vulnerable and taking the risk and uh, putting your story out there uh, that way uh, in service to others. Um, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So um, I do appreciate you stopping by today. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Andrew Murray, uh, who is actually a porn addiction recovery coach. Uh, I'm going to put his data on the show details. Uh, is there anything that you want to, do you have a handle or website or anything that you want us to put on? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, on Facebook, you can join um, a Facebook group called Porn Free Success. Um, it's a private group. Um, so if anyone is worried that anybody's going to see them joining a group, it's totally private. So um, yeah, feel free to join. Um, and yeah, what's the name of that group again, Andrew? Porn Free Success. Okay. I appreciate it. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was Andrew Murray. I, I definitely appreciate him taking the moment to stop by and uh, give us some flavor. Uh, that's very important. Um, I invite you to go back and actually listen to the story again because there's a lot of the journey that's spoken about. You know, we can sit here and teach technique all day long. Sometimes you can hear the technique playing out in somebody's life a lot better than we could ever teach. So I, I invite you to go back and listen to the story again. Uh, we do thank Andrew for stopping by. And as always, make today and every day uh, for the rest of your life your living masterpiece and just know that uh, the opposite of addiction is connection. So make yourself two friends today. Collect two wins. And we'll see you next time. God bless each and every one.